Nearly every Muslim will assert that the Quran has been perfectly preserved, down to the last word, letter, and diacritical mark. This comes in part from Surah 85 and Surah 6, which talk about the Quran being on a preserved tablet, and Surah 6, of course, says that the words of Allah cannot be altered, as other ayat in the Quran say also. I will not be covering textual criticism in this video regarding how many versions of the Quran there are and whether variants do exist in the extant Quranic manuscripts. The thesis of this video is simply to demonstrate that the belief in a perfectly preserved, complete Quran is a modern invention. It was not believed by the earliest and most authoritative sources of Islam. Sahih al-Bakari 5.30, Anas bin Malik was found weeping as he said, I do not know anything which I used to know during the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, except a salat and this salat too is lost. In Bakari 8.16, Ibn Abbas narrates, Umar said, I am afraid that after a long time has passed, people may say, we do not find the verses of stoning to death in the holy book, and consequently they may go astray by leaving an obligation which Allah has revealed. In Sunan Ibn Majah 1944, Aisha said, The verse of stoning and breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the Messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came in and ate it. In Bukhari 2807, Zayed bin Thabit says, When the Quran was compiled from various written manuscripts, one of the verses of Surat al-Azab was missing which I used to hear Allah's messenger reciting. I could not find it, except with Kuzaymu ibn Thabit al-Ansari, whose witness Allah's messenger regarded as equal to the witness of two men. Muhammad himself forgot the Quran, and Bukhari 556 narrated Aisha. The Prophet heard a man reciting the Quran in the mosque and said, May Allah bestow mercy on him, as he has reminded me of such and such a verse of such and such a surah. He relied on others to help him with recitation, but unfortunately, an unspecified number of them were killed. Bukhari 1300 speaks of the sadness that Muhammad experienced when the reciters of the Quran were martyred. Muhammad said that others forgot the Quran as well in Bukhari 5032. It is a bad thing that some of you say, I have forgotten such and such a verse. The Quran escapes from the hearts of men faster than camels do when they are released from their tying ropes. In Sahih Muslim 2286, Abu Musa al-Ashari sent for the reciters of Basra. They came to him, and they were three hundred in number. They recited the Quran, and he said, You are the best among the inhabitants of Basra, for you are the reciters among them. We used to recite a surah which resembled in length the severity to Surah 9. And he continues to list another surah, which was forgotten as well, except for a small portion of it. Bakari 5005, Umar said, Ubay ibn Kab was the best of us in recitation of the Quran, yet we leave some of what he recites. In response to this, Ubay ibn Kab says, I have taken it from the mouth of Allah's messenger, and I will not leave it for anything whatsoever. In Sahih Bukhari 1242, Abu Bakr recites a verse to which the narrator adds, By Allah, it was as if the people never knew that Allah had revealed this verse before till Abu Bakr recited it, and then whoever heard it started reciting it. In Jami al Termini 3104, Abdullah ibn Masud disliked Zaid bin Thabit copying the Musahif, and he said, O you Muslim people, avoid copying the Mushaf and the recitation of this man. Ibn Abi Dawood, Kitab al Musahif, Umar was once looking for the text of a specific verse of the Quran he vaguely remembered. To his deep sorrow, he discovered that the only person who had any record of that verse had been killed in the Battle of Yamama, and that verse was subsequently lost. In Bukhari 3219, Allah's Messenger said, Jibreel read the Quran to me in one way, and I continued asking him to read it different ways, till he read it in seven different ways. Some recitations were so different that they invoked rage in Umar, Bukhari 4992. I listened to his recitation and noticed that he recited it several different ways which Allah's Messenger had not taught me. I was about to jump over him during his prayer, but I controlled my temper. And when he completed his prayer, I put his upper garment around his neck and seized him by it, and said, Who taught you this surah, which I heard you reciting? In Bukhari 4987, Hudaifa was afraid of their differences in the recitation of the Quran. Uthman sent a message to Hafsa saying, Send us the manuscripts of the Quran so that we may compile the Quranic materials in perfect copies and return the manuscripts to you. Uthman sent to every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied and ordered that all the other Quranic materials be burnt. In Bukhari 2814, there was revealed a verse which we used to recite, but it was canceled later on. 
The verse was, Inform our people that we have met our Lord, he is pleased with us, and he has made us pleased. Bakari 3064 adds of this ayah, Then the verse was canceled. Finally, as the prestigious 9th century Islamic scholar and jurist Abu Ubaid said from Aisha, Surat al-Azab used to be recited in the time of the Prophet with 200 verses, but when Uthman wrote out the codices, he was unable to procure more of it than there is today. To summarize, Muhammad forgot parts of the Quran. Many reciters who helped him remember died in battle. Anas wept over the loss of Muhammad's teachings. Umar dragged someone by the neck to Muhammad because the recitations were so different. He was also afraid that some ayat would be lost. Aisha spoke of an ayah eaten by a sheep. Imam Muslim recorded an authentic tradition where the best reciters of Basra were unaware of surat that had been lost. Ubay ibn Qab was one of the best reciters, yet some of what he recited was left out. Abu Bakr recited a verse which apparently nobody had heard of until he said it. Abdul ibn Masud was opposed to Zayd ibn Thabit's collection of the Quran, even under the authority of Uthman. He encouraged his followers not to follow the recitation of Zayd. What about the canceled verse or the one eaten by Aisha's sheep? Were these preserved from eternity past only to be revealed for a brief period of time to be canceled or eaten? Imams need to teach Muslims, and Muslims need to investigate for themselves what their own sources say and what Quranic scholars already know. Islam's earliest and most authoritative sources do not speak of a univocal, perfect, preserved, complete Quran. Perfect preservation is a modern invention.